made your way out on this Wednesday night for our prayer time and Bible study. Welcome you to the Lord's house again. As far as announcements, let me make uh, just a couple. This Sunday morning, 9.45, our Bible study classes, and then 11 o'clock, our worship service. Don't forget that. That's this Sunday. First Sunday in October, which is two weeks away. First Sunday in October, our service will begin at 10 a.m. sharp here in the Christian Life Center. We will not be having Sunday school that morning. Our worship service will start at 10 o'clock. Lord willing, the Bledsoe's will be here singing and taking part of that service. So you remember that. That's first Sunday in October. That's all the announcements I have unless you have some. If not, a prayer list, certainly the lost, continue to remember uh, God's working. God's dealing with some folks here in this congregation as we meet. I mean, uh, he, he poured out a bucket of honey on a Sunday, and he was moving. He was convicting, but people still held on. But uh, keep praying. Keep praying. Keep seeking the Lord and uh, be obedient unto God, and we'll watch him do marvelous and wonderful things in our midst and that we can rejoice together seeing these new converts birthed into the family of God. You see, I believe God can save them. We studied in the book of James on Tuesday mornings. We have not because we ask not. And we have not because we ask amidst. No, we're just God save the lost and that's it. When's the last time, and I, I, and I know we don't want to point people out in our services and call names of lost people. I don't believe we should be doing that. But when you enter in into your prayer closet and you shut your door, the Bible teaches if you pray in private, he will reward him openly. When you go into your special prayer place, call these people by name that you believe are lost. Seek the face of God on their behalf. Have a burden for these people. And then watch God move. Watch God move. So the lost still remember them. Uh, many in the congregation still need our prayers. I know Larry still needs our prayers. Kendra, you're close. Yeah. Be praying. We're praying for a healthy baby. So remember Cole and Kendra. Uh, expecting a phone call about any time. So be remembering them as you pray. Still remember Brother Larry Slate, his legs. Brother Frenchy, still remember him. Frenchy says he's doing some better. We're glad for that, but still remember him as you pray. Others, you go right ahead and mention them. Betty Cox, I know she needs our prayers. Uh, she's having trouble with her legs. Miss Connie, Charles, still remember these. Lou, he's going to have knee replacement, I think, November, first part of November. Be remembering him. Mm. Remember this. Any others? Yeah, I remember this. Continue to remember our shut in. I took an opportunity today to call them and check on them. Let's remember our shut in. Miss Bertha and Cleo, uh, J.D. and Marla, and Joe and me and Scoots. Let's remember them all. Don't forget them. On the COVID. We're thankful for that. Samantha, how's your grandma doing? Good. Anyone else? Amen. Bruce, bad shape, I understand. Remember him as you pray. All these churches that are 
without pastors. And these churches that are bringing in new pastors, we need to be praying for them and their pastors. They'll work together. Anyone else? Those are the partial knee replacements, right? Oh, they're doing both of them at the same time, I believe yeah. you said. Remember this. Still remember these other ladies that are expecting Ashley, Shay, Summer. Still remember these. Cole, pray for us, would you please? Amen. Thank you, Cole. Appreciate the good humble prayer. Let's all stand together and sing one, all right? I announced uh, Sunday that the nominating committee was finished with their duties and they have a list ready to present for the church to vote tonight for the coming church year, which will begin October 1. It goes from October 1 through September 30th of next year. So uh, we need to take care of that quick business meeting. So at this time, if you're a member of Victory Baptist Church, and you're here in full fellowship, would you let it be known by the sign of I? I? If you're here and you're a member and you're not in full fellowship, would you let it be known by the same sign? Church clerk will note that we do enter into this business meeting in full fellowship. So at this time, I'm going to ask Brother Charlie Newman to come up and go over this list. Does anybody need a copy? There was copies laid out here over on the table. You had an opportunity Sunday, but if you need some, let us know if you need a copy. All right, Brother Char Charlie, you carry right on there. For the uh, Victor Baptist Church nominating committee, um, we went through those. The Sunday school director is Tanner Sheets. Sunday school secretary is Connie Hensley infant classes 
is Samantha Kovac and Stephanie Sheets. Toddler classes is Kathy Flippin and Tamara McGrady. Children's classes are Renee Sheets and Sunshine Peel. Youth classes are Guy Sheets and Caleb Revis. Youth adult classes are Monty Leonard and David Banks. The adult classes are Larry Slate and Kevin Peel. Senior adult classes, Marty Holofield, Charlie Newman. The floaters are Tim Flippin, Tanner Sheets. The bylaw committee is Larry Slate, Guy Sheets, and Charles Vernon. Youth leaders are Tim and Kathy Flippin. The bulletins are Ashley and Nick Newman. Maintenance committee is Brad Gammons, chairman, David Burton, Kevin Peel, Larry Slate, Tim Flippin. WMU is Ruth Oakley, director, Betty Cox, assistant, and Donna Hawks. The tellers are Adeline Cochram and Joanne Cochram. Trustees are Don Osborne, Jim Cochram, Marty Holofield. The treasurer, Monty and Angela Leonard. The hostess of the decorating committee is Joanne Osborne, Adeline Cochram, Phyllis Taubert, Charlie and Peggy Newman, Kevin and Sunshine Peel, Ruth Oakley, and volunteers. The baptism committee is Charles Vernon, Donna Hawks, and Charlie Newman. The Lord's Supper is Renee Sheets and Allison Lowe. The clerks are Samantha Kovac and Renee Sheets. The Christmas play is Tim and Kathy Flippin. The ushers are Kevin Peel, head, Brian Banks, assistant, and the eight volunteers that they choose to alternate. The card committee is Diane Slate, Dolores Taylor, and Judy Sheets. The bereavement committee is Diane Slate Flowers, Ruth Oakley Food Tray. The nominating committee is Charlie Newman, Don Osborne, and Caleb Revis. Vacation Bible School is Sunshine Peel. Music is Ashley Newman and Brock Jessup. The pianist is Lori Gammons and Sandra Burton. The acoustic and bass guitar is Tanner Sheets. Phone tree is Guy Sheets. Parking committee is Guy Sheets and volunteers. Pictures are Kathy Flippin. Sound system, live stream is Guy Sheets, Nick Newman, and the radio is Tanner's Sheets. Secretary, security, <laughs> Jeff Hawks and Mike Sheets. Surrey Baptist representatives are Luth Oakley and Luke Oakley and Ruth Oakley and Charlie and Peggy Newman. The finance committee is Larry Slate, Guy Sheets, Jeff Hawks, Monty, and Angela Leonard. And the 50th church anniversary for 2021 is Betty Cox Chairman. Sunshine Peel, Peggy Newman, Phyllis Taubert, and Matt Goins. Any objectives, questions, or take it up with him? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to know I'm not the only one that mispronounces and does those things. You did good, Charlie. You just added a few new members. It must be Peggy's glasses. <laughs> must be Peggy's glasses you're wearing there. Mike Sheets. Mike Sheets and Joanne Cockrum. And, and we know what you say. Hey, listen. We know what you say. You did fine. You did fine. All right. Any questions or comments pertaining to what the nominating committee is proposing to the church? Some of these positions were voted upon by certain Sunday school classes, voted on their teachers, WMU voted on their people. So some of those things have already been voted on by those different groups. Others were, uh, you were approached by the nominating committee. Any questions or comments? And let me say this. 
if you want to serve in a capacity after we vote on this, come see me. I'll put you to work. Don't go out here saying nobody asked me to do nothing. You come ask me, I'll put you to work. I promise you. There's work to do. There's work to do. If there's no questions or comments, do I have a motion that we receive this as it was presented by the nominating committee with the exception of name mispronunciations? <laughs> have a motion back there in the back. Brother Guy, do I have a second? Brad, we have a second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Are there any opposed? Raise your right hand. The clerk will note that that was unanimous. So uh, we appreciate the work of the nominating committee. Also, if there's any vacancies that occur or come up during the year, the nominating committee appoints people to fill those positions until the next uh, election. So that's how we do that. All right, is there a motion we dismiss this business meeting? Have a motion. Do we have a second? All right, turn with me to the book of Daniel, if you're in favor. Daniel chapter 12 for a few minutes tonight. We'll see how far we get here tonight. I'm going back to verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people. What's that time referring to again? The time of the end, okay? This is how we can take God's word in context and know that we're on firm footing when we say things. Don't you know that verse 1 is written exactly the way it's written so we don't get out in left field? And at that time, and it says who? Thy people. Who's Daniel's people? We talked some about this last week. The Jews, right? Let's, let's remember, this is speaking of the time of the end. It is not speaking unto the church. The church will be raptured out before the tribulation begins on the earth, right? This is speaking unto Jews that will be on the face of the earth going through the tribulation. Many will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Some will still deny him as the Savior, as the Messiah. But the Bible says this, and at that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, but here's the ones that will be delivered. Not all Jews will be delivered. Some are going to take the mark of the beast. And if you take the mark of the beast, you're going to eternally damn your soul. Church, let me help you. It will be impossible for us to take the mark of the beast because we're checking out before it's a degree upon the earth. Now, I know there's things that's being done right now that resemble what could be happening in the future. Would you agree with me tonight that the devil is setting the stage, getting people used to a system, getting them ready so they'll be so easily deceived? I was reading a little bit this afternoon, getting ready for Revelation, and just sitting there thinking in my mind, my, my, what a terrible, 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 terrible time that's going to be. With the droughts, the pestilence, the sun so hot, the fires, you know, food's going to be hard to come by. So hard to come by. How in the world are these people going to make it? And unless they have the mark of the beast, they will not be able to buy, sell, or trade. I mean, y'all getting ready to have a baby. What, I mean, I'm not picking on you. I'm just using you as an example, okay? Can I do that? Can you imagine delivering a baby during the tribulation? Can 
but it's going to happen. Can you imagine, listen to this, can you imagine, imagine being pregnant right now, not you, Cody, <laughs> but I'm just walking over here. No, that'd be a miracle, wouldn't it? He's blushing, ain't he? I see the sweat balls popping out on his forehead right now. I'm just walking over here. No, what I'm saying is, can you imagine a lost person pregnant, just, just say newly pregnant? Might be me. <laughs> I'm just saying, hey, hey, just, just been diagnosed with being pregnant. Just found out they were pregnant. They're lost. The rapture happens tonight. The church checks out then things start to begin shortly after the rapture of the church. That person is lost, they're left on this earth, and things begin to unfold with the judgments of God. All right, now, let's say, I'm just saying this, gives me cold chills. We say we're strong in the faith. And it's awful easy to say we're strong in the faith because we know what's ahead for us. Right? Right? We believe we're checking out before it starts. You know, it's easy to say I'm on the winning side when we know we don't have to face the trouble. But let's say that person that's left behind, that's newly pregnant, now converts. And they get saved. But they're not going to take the mark of the beast because they don't want to damn their soul. So now they can no longer buy, sell, or trade to take care of that little baby when it's born. You think it's a time of trouble that this world's never seen before? I promise you it will be a time of trouble. And how hard is it going to be? I mean, I'm just thinking for me. Brother Warren, I don't know what I'd do. But it'd be hard. My young'uns are screaming, want something to eat. And me wanting to feed them. To take that mark. That's why I'm glad I'm on this side of grace. You better be too. We don't know what we'd do. You know, it's awful easy for us to look in the scripture and we pick on Peter. He got out of the boat and sunk. What would we do? We probably wouldn't never got out anyway. We wouldn't took the first step probably. Do you have a question? The key, I believe, is the church. I don't know as I have the answer to that, Peggy. I, I don't know as I have the answer to that, but I, I believe, I believe life's going to go on. I believe that baby's going to be born. I just believe that baby's going to be born. That's the way it is today. If the child doesn't reach the age of accountability, hmm? we don't know. It can vary. Everybody's, I'll give you a for instance, uh, Penny. There are grown adults today that have mental disabilities that don't have the IQ of a six-year-old. I don't think they've ever reached that age of accountability. But I believe when they die, they go to be with the Lord. Now, that's what I believe, whatever that age is. Everybody says 12. You know why I say that? It's because when Jesus taught the temple, and that ain't got nothing to do with age accountability. But that's what people, that's what people use as the age of accountability is 12. I know that I've lost it nine, and I believe so heavily in my heart, if I didn't get saved that night, I'd never get the opportunity again. That's how heavy conviction was on me, Roland. It varies. It's very Do what? Yeah. Hey, there, you'll never get saved until you realize you're lost. Amen. Amen. There's people today that's never been in church, never been around church, wasn't brought up in church. They're 20, they're 30, don't know nothing about church. They don't even know they're lost, but they're lost. We need to be doing our part spreading the gospel. 
spreading the gospel. But here's where I want to get to. This is speaking about the Jews. I got off on the church, but this is speaking of the Jews at the end time, during the tribulation, towards the end, if you will. There's a book it mentions right here. And I have often wondered, you see, I don't have this Bible figured out. I'm glad he's given me some understanding and some knowledge of some things, Brother Warren. But I'm not going to stand up here and try to tell you I know everything because you know I'd be lying. There's not a person that's walked on the face of this earth that knows all this. Never has been, never will be other than the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There are some things kept unto God himself. We just believe it by faith. We trust him. But it says, and at that time, and at that time, Thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. So there's certain ones that's going to be delivered, right? Who are they? Amen. It's right there in the scripture. Now my question has always been, what's that book? That's what I think. That's what I think. But let's put it in context. <laughs> oh. I'm not trying to throw you. Listen, I'm not trying to throw you. I'm not trying to throw you. Well, let's keep the verse in context. And at that time. What's that time? The time of the end. Don't you think our name's already been read out of the Lamb's Book of Life? Here's the question. I don't know what this book is. But turn with me to Revelation chapter 5. For just a moment, I'm going to read the whole chapter. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Let me help you. Let's go to verse 4 in Daniel chapter 12. Just flip back over just a minute. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Back to Revelation. Verse 3 of chapter 5, And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials of odors, which, oh, listen, are the prayers of the saints. Who's the saints? It ain't us. We the church. The saints were the Old Testament believers, right? Okay, back to Revelation 5. I'm still reading. Verse 9, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people a nation. Does that sound like the Jews that have been dispersed throughout the different countries? Hello. And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign 
on the earth. Where's King Jesus' throne going to be? Jerusalem. Huh? He's going to sit for 1,000 years on that millennial throne. King David's throne. Let's read this. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne. And the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Now, you can try to add that all you want to, but all that means is it's a number you just can't comprehend. That's what it means. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Do you see all those things in God's outline right there that the Lamb gets? And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Chapter 6, verse 1. I'm going to stop. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seas. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. I don't know. All I do, all I do know is this. Daniel was told to seal up the book. Write it down, close it up, seal it. Is that what he's told? Then John the Apostle, when we get to the revelation of Jesus Christ, is told to open a book for the time is at hand there's things left unto God you and I just don't know but I do know this I do know this we sing a song and I get excited when we sing it I know yes I know that my name is there that's the main thing I know my name is there and it'll never be blotted out it can't be erased. Why? Have you ever tried? They do forensic tests. Now, I don't know nothing about this, but they tell me if a murderer commits murder, they'll try to wash up the blood, and dry up the blood, and do away with everything. But you know what? They can put a special light on it, and they still see blood. Thanks be unto God, one day that blood was applied to this heart's door. And the devil, there's been some times he's tried to get me to doubt it, Gray. I've even lived like I probably ought to doubt it a few times. I'm being honest tonight. You take your halo off too. But there's one thing about it, Connie. <laughs> no matter what, I'm still his. The blood will never lose its power. And the devil can't stop that. It'll never be blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. Now, for those of you that just had a problem with what I said, you might want to consider getting saved because you're trusting in your good works to get you to heaven rather than in the shed blood of the perfect one to get you to heaven. Verse number three. No, verse number two. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. You might say, well, what's some? Why not all? What's, what's some? You've got to remember, this was unto Daniel's people, who? The Jews. There's going to be some saved Jews going out with the church. That's why it don't say all Jews. But many of them that sleep. In other words, there's going to be a resurrection time. At the end of the tribulation. For those that have died, that were martyred for their faith in Jesus Christ. And then there will be others that died as a result of famine, disease, but they still never received Christ. They're going to be resurrected and judged for their wicked deeds. 
But those that didn't receive the mark of the beast that were saved during the tribulation, there will be a time of resurrection for them as well. Do you believe that? If you don't, you've got a problem with the word of God because he says it. Amen. I'm glad I got something firm to stand on. And notice this. Back to chapter 12. Verse 3, And they that be wise shall, word of promise, shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Thought about that verse. Probably going to be a little cloudy tonight. You might not can see it as good. But last night, it was cool, it was crisp, it was clear. If you'd have went outside and pitch dark, you could have looked up. That moon's a shining. Them stars are glistening everywhere. And did you know what? Them stars was there before you was born. There's going to be stars there. That North Star's been there a long time, ain't it? Huh? I'm reminded in the Bible, I believe it's over in the book of Psalms. The Bible says that he telleth the stars and calleth them by name. These that turn those to righteousness are going to be like the stars in the firmament. I thought about that Hollywood walk of stars out yonder. Do you know that's going to burn up one day? <laughs> I don't care how good an actor or whatever they was or humanitarian or philanthropist or whatever they claim to be. One day their little footprint or handprints leaving out, burning up. That Hollywood walk of stars is going to vanish one day. But those that turn many to righteousness are going to shine like the stars in the firmament of heaven forever and ever and ever. Don't you want to be like that? Everybody wants to be a star. Growing up, I wanted to be a major league baseball player. I don't know why in the world none of them drafted me when I turned 18, Teddy Graham. But they did. Some of you had goals of being an NBA star or a PGA golfer or an NFL football player, whatever it may be. But you know what? Very, very, very few, very, very, very few ever make it that far in this life. But I tell you what you can do. You can be a soul winner. You can tell others about Jesus. And listen to me. Don't you expect every time to have a conversion. It don't work that way. But once you try and somebody rejects you, don't you stop. You keep telling people about Jesus. I'll never forget what an insurance agent told me one time. <laughs> he says, you know, life insurance is hard to sell. He said, it's difficult. It's difficult. You're selling somebody something they can't touch, they can't use, they can't eat, they can't put on, they can't play with it, they can't drive it, and they ain't going to do no good till they can't use it. He said, you're talking about a hard sale. Life insurance is a hard sale. I said, I agree with you. I understand that. He said, but wouldn't you think everybody needs it? I said, well, probably. I mean, you know, if you got a bunch of bills, you still owe for your house, you still owe for this, you want to take care of your kids and spouse that may be left behind, I mean, you might want to have some. I heard a fellow say one time, says, well, it don't matter to me when I'm dead and gone, I don't care. <laughs> Insurance agent said he went to him and said, who's your wife's future husband? I'm going to go talk to her. He, he probably cares more about her than you do today. <laughs> but what the insurance agent told me was this. He said, I can go knock on door. Hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm here to sell life insurance. You don't want none, do you? And he said, about all, I'm going to say, no, 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 I don't want none, no, I don't want one. He said, somewhere down the line, somebody's going to say, yeah, I've been looking for something. Come on in here. So 
the way it is with soul winning. We are so easy to give up. Hello. We're so easy to give up. Some of us ain't even started. Oh gosh, that can be exhausting. But so many of us are so easy to give up because we don't get everybody saved we talk to. You know what? God never said we'd get anybody saved. Plus, I can't save nobody, Pamela. I can't save a soul, Gray. But I can sow the seed. And I can tell them about the man that can. Amen? It's a snowball effect. Listen to me. It's a snowball effect. I believe, I'm telling you tonight what I believe. Blessed are they who die in the Lord, for their works do follow them. That's in Revelation. You ever heard that read at a funeral? You say, well, I ain't got no works. Well, ain't nothing going to follow you. Hello? You want to be rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ? You're going to have to do some work for the master. And the kind of work I'm talking about is trying to win others to Jesus Christ. We can't get Christians to do that today because most of them can't even be faithful to church when the church house opens. Yeah, I know. Come on, it's the truth. But let me ask you a question. I don't claim to be anything, sunshine. I don't. I'm just a sinner that's been saved by God's amazing grace, Katie Gray. Just trying to do what he called me to do. And that is to preach this book, the Word of God. You, you know what, Charlie, in these... I guess about 14 years or so I've been a pastor and a preaching. Praise God, I've seen some get saved. I ain't seen thousands, but I've seen a bunch. Especially when I first started. Maybe I need to preach harder now. Would, but I'm getting old and I can't. Need the help of the Holy Spirit. But you know what? Listen to me. I'm going to tell you what I believe. Those that went before me those Sunday school teachers, those preachers, those pastors that was a hammering it down and letting me have it every week. When I come to know Jesus and then I announce my call to the ministry, every time I saw somebody get saved, if there's any reward coming my way in heaven, I believe they're going to be partakers in it as well. Uh-huh, I believe that. I believe that. It's a snowball effect. The Bible says, what would a man give in exchange for his own soul? Let me get one more verse. I believe this is referring also unto the 144,000 144, witnesses. Verse 4. <clears throat> I'm going to stop after this verse because I want to start back on verse 5 next time. We, it's another section. But verse 4 says this. But thou, O Daniel, what does but mean, the word of God? Changing directions. Huh? That's right. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the, it say books with an S on it. I wonder. If old Daniel sealed it was seven seals, making it about as tight and secure as he could. I believe Daniel gave God his best, don't you? Huh? And the Bible said over there in Revelation, there was no man found worthy that could open the book. But over yonder was a lamb as it had been slain. And he came, he's a lion of the tribe of Judah. And he took the book out of the one hand that sat upon the throne. And one by one, he began to open the seals. Which relate unto the different judgments of God that we're going to see in the book of Revelation. I want you to understand this as we begin to study this book of Revelation sometime down the road. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. We've seen him. We've seen in the word the humble servant.
the little babe born with no room in the end. We've seen the one through faith that opened blinded eyes, that opened deaf ears, that caused the lame to walk. We saw him spit upon. We saw him mocked. We saw his beard plucked, smote upon the head, cursed. We saw him made fun of. And yet like a lamb led into the slaughter, Isaiah said he didn't open his mouth. But in Revelation, honey, you're going to see the lion. You ain't going to see the lamb. You're going to see the lion that's showing up. And he's going to do business with this world. And them Jews that have rejected him as the Messiah, they're going to cry out for him. They're going to cry out for him. I can't help. I'm about to get excited. Boy, I'm thankful for the, for the good Lord and the Spirit of God. I am. I am. I really am. I was up there in the study the other week, and, you know, us preachers. Maybe somebody's listening out there. Us preachers, you know, we try to, you know, homecoming's coming up. I prayed, Lord, is there somebody you want to put on my heart to see if they'll come preach homecoming? Never did get nobody. He didn't give me nobody. So I guess I'll try. Unless he lays somebody on my heart between now and then. But anyway, I can't just wait till then and step up there and say, well, here we go. Here's your homecoming message. I need to be trying to do some preparation. You know what I mean? So anyway, make a long story short. He led me to Genesis chapter 24. What a beautiful story. Abraham sent his servant to go find a wife for his son Isaac. And when <laughs> the Holy Spirit is the representative of the servant, he said he had all of his master's goods <laughs> at his disposal. The Holy Spirit makes the things of Jesus Christ known unto us. He's got the disposal of all the master's goods. When he went to that well, I'm going to shut up. Because I'm not preaching this for homecoming, <laughs> by the way. I'm going to preach Genesis chapter 24 as a series afterwards if the Lord will let me. Because there's too much in there. Too much in there. But anyway, I can't help but think. Holy Spirit led the right woman to the servant. And the servant met her at the well. She drew him something to drink. Then she said, let me get your camel something as well. He started putting jewels on her. Whew, boy, ain't it good to be a Christian. The blessings of God he lays on us while we're still here. I believe that servant told her all about her master's son, Jesus Christ. And on the journey back home, oh, I love this part. Isaac was out yonder, and when she seen him, the Bible said she lit off that camel and went toward it. She hadn't never seen Isaac in her life. You know why she went? Because the servant had told her enough about him <laughs> that she knowed who he was the moment her eyes seen him. And that's the way it ought to be with you and I as Christians. We've got enough of God's word and we've had enough of his blessings on our life. The Holy Spirit's revealed enough unto us that when our eyes behold him, we're going to light off and go a running to him. We're going to know who he is. But that's not the homecoming message. Because then he led me to the book of Judges, chapter 11, about Je Japheth, a picture of a rejected Savior and his own people called upon him to deliver him, to deliver the Israelites from the Ammonites. They run him out of Israel to Tob. I'm reminded of Jesus. He came unto his own, but his own received him not. He went over there and he took up an old group of dirty fishermen. And through them, he began to turn this world upside down. But you know what? When they got in trouble... They called for old Jephthah. Come save us from Ammon. Come save us from the king. You know what he said? He said, I'm going to get to you in the Westfield version. 
And I'm going to preach it homecoming, Lord willing, if you don't change my mind. I'm going to teach it now. I'm going to preach it then. Westfield version is this. Why are you calling for me now? You run me out of town years ago. Why you want me now? He said, but I'll tell you what I'll do. He said, I'll come down there and deliver you. But when I do, he said, I'm going to be the king of this place. Do you see what's going to happen with the Jews? One day, King Jesus is coming back, and they're going to be in such turmoil, such trouble. They're going to say, there comes the Messiah. Yeah, we will now have you to reign over us. I'm going to stop. We'll pick up verse 5, Lord willing, next Wednesday. Question or comment pertaining to the Word of God? If not, go ahead. Yeah. Uh -huh. Scientists today, I don't care how good they are, they're still discovering new solar systems out there. They say. God already knew where they was at. And if there's stars in them, he already had them called by name and told them how to move. Yeah. You know, the greatest thing about it, I, well, I don't want to say the greatest thing about it, but the one thing that always blows my mind is he knows every hair on my head. Now, don't you make fun and say, well, that ain't hard. You ain't got me. It may not be, but somebody's got a whole lot, and he knows yours too. You know what? You couldn't count all your hairs. Because you'd have some falling out and you'd lose count. He knows them all. Knows every hair on your head. He knows all about us. He knows all about us. Anyone else? If not, appreciate your time tonight. Appreciate the work of the nominating committee. Charlie, Caleb, Don. Y'all done a good job. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate church, how you handle yourself in a business meeting. I've been here 10 years, and I've seen you handle yourself just like that every time. Do business. And that's where it ought to be. It's not about us. It's what the Lord wills, what the Lord wants in our life. Like I said, if you didn't get asked, you want to serve in some capacity, come see me. I'll put you to work. If you want to call it work. But you just remember what servants do. Servants do what their masters ask them to do. So, you know, don't tell me you want to lead the orchestra when we ain't even got one. You know what I mean? All right. Let's stand. We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. God bless you. Be praying for the service Sunday. And I ask you, please, please, say a special prayer for these folks that are lost that we believe are lost, call them by name in your prayer closet. Have a burden for them. Don't give up until we hear from heaven. I'm not talking about asking amidst. I'm talking about pleading and begging on their behalf. God can work. God can do Ernie, dismiss us in prayer, please. Amen.